All right, how's it going, everybody? This is Ismorta, and this is episode 43 of my custom Kingdom Death Monster campaign. This is Lantern Year 13, and this is the showdown phase with the hand. This is the second time that I'm fighting the hand. Now, this is a nemesis encounter, whereas previously I did a special showdown. What's the difference between the two? Well, there's different rules depending on when you fight the monster as well as the level of the monster. So what's common with all of these is the showdowns. Showdown just means that's when you do the combat tactical against whatever the monster is. But special showdown, what that means is it's a showdown that you trigger during the middle of the settlement phase. So after you do the showdown, you merely go back to the middle of the settlement phase and you can still do a quarry. And for a showdown, they tell you specifically what to fight. Now, for a nemesis encounter, that replaces your quarry. Instead of hunting a quarry, you're going after this boss monster. Um, but for that, the level depends on what it says on what triggers that nemesis encounter. So if it says you fight a nemesis encounter for a particular level, then you fight that level. But if it says you do a nemesis encounter period like for example on the timeline where it says fight the watcher then you fight a level one or if you've already fought that level before then you fight the, the next level up but if it's scripted that's the level that you fight um now in this case you also notice in the book it says whenever you fight a nemesis encounter you fight one level than the one you fought prior that's also true but notice that implies, again, Nemesis Encounter, not a special showdown. So again, like the fight sequence is called a showdown, but Nemesis Encounter means it's scripted. You're fighting that, that legendary instead of a quarry versus you're just fighting him to resolve a different choice during the settlement phase. So for this, it's our first Nemesis Encounter. And just like it's scripted on there, we are fighting level one. But it's also true in the special showdown, we also fought a level one, the hand. All right. Now that I got all the this disclaimer stuff out of the way. All right. So for this, because there's no hunt video that we're doing, then what I have done is I've already done most of the setup, but I still have to do the departure and arrival bonuses as well as, well, put the miniatures on board. And there was one thing that I wanted to correct. I know I have a trend of this. Um, from last episode, a choice that I made that I want to change it up, which was um, I don't want to do two rhythm chasers, which is automatic. You can spend on because I only need one during this fight. But I desperately, what's a bigger um, add for trying to survive this, ne this Nessus encounter is to actually do a shadow ritual and share extra scents as opposed to doing rhythm, a second rhythm chaser. Because I only have one person get to rhythm chaser for this uh, showdown anyway. Because you have to have no heavy gear and a musical instrument. Um... But by giving extra sense, that gives everyone the ability to do dodge twice in a round. Meaning you could stop more attacks. So I increase the chances of my everyone surviving. So I already did Shadow Ritual. So Oko, who had extra sense, got a disorder and then shared extra sense with everyone else here. So now everyone has extra sense. And Oko, ironically, also got Immortal which is actually great for him. Again, that's what Volva had, allows you to, instead of taking physical damage, it always goes to mental damage and you can't spend survival until you're not insane. Then your stats actually work as normal. So actually the card is actually way better than I thought. I thought it meant at all times, you always have to spend insanity instead of taking damage. And that's not true. If you get to the point that you take way too much damage, then you're not insane anymore. Now you can spend survival, and now you actually take physical damage as normal. So it's actually, it's a fantastic card. And the fact that it's on Oko, who has 19 insanity, it's fantastic. And it also has a set of Screaming Antelope. So he's actually a, a fantastic tank. 
And then again, I have a second set of Screaming Antelope, a full set of Rawhide, which you can regenerate survival. Have low hit points, half the defense, but you can spend twice, um, you have twice as much survival because you can roll to get it back. And then Joy has a full cat set cat of gear. So this, I'm doing um, Sona and Taken, who are the new children, who are twins. And then I'm using Joy and I'm using Oko, is who I'm sending up. Um, okay, so Oko got immortal. I'll, I've already added it, so I can put this back. And that's, that's, that's why I spent it. And so, again, my endeavors I spent was on uh, building a facility and doing some face pain to help intimacy, blah, blah. But now the bonus I gotta do is, again, the departure, leaving, and then arriving. Leaving the settlement, and the bonus is for arriving at showdown. That's why I still have to do. Okay. Um, and I definitely want people to survive, not only because you tip, you, oh, of course, always want people to survive, but I have dangerously, again, low population. So I want to have people survive this fight. But then also, again, you get more endeavors for people that survive during the showdown. So if you have more endeavors, you have more ability to do stuff, either preparing your civilization during the next lantern year, when they go out on hunts and showdowns, as well as innovating, um, making new buildings like I did last, uh, well, like I did this settlement, so on and so forth. So I still need to shuffle this deck, but I'm keep here just in case I get more disorders. I can reach it. All right. So now I'll do departing the parting bonuses, which is from what I've done pretty significant actually. So what we got first is first of all, no one has red fist this time going out, so no one's gonna get a plus one strength bonus. But I also don't care, and I'll explain later why. That depends on the alternate strategy that we do to try to survive this showdown. Okay, so what do we got? We know by default we have three survival because of my innovations, three of them, which I've recorded here so I don't have to keep looking it up. I get plus one endeavor when I return, plus three survival when I depart, and I my settlement survival limit is eight. All right, so I know I get three, but then Weird Dream also gives me three insanity, so that's three and three. And then Face Painting with Battle Paint gave me additional two survival, one insanity. So that means everyone by default, not including the other stuff on their gear that says Depart, are gonna be getting five survival and four insanity, which is awesome. And then of course, those people with, with uh, Screaming Bracers, also got to put Acanthus in play, and that's what you see here, the Acanthus that I can pick up, which I realized is way more powerful than I thought because it's another way to generate survival, but also it can automatically trigger, again, when you get hit with a severe injury, that you immediately sacrifice that dried Acanthus instead of taking that hit, which is huge. That's like a dodge. It's huge, man. So if you use those all the time when people get hit, like if everybody has one, or three of four, that's awesome. Okay, so again, it's everyone's getting five survival and four insanity on top of whatever else. So I'll go around the board. So start with uh, take, uh, Taken. It's spelled Taken, but it's, spelled, it's pronounced talk like Takenoko, the board game. Um, okay, so I have stuff, anything that says depart. Um, he's got an acanthus that says plus two survival. So that means he gets plus two, plus three, and then plus two. So he gets five plus two. He gets seven survival. So he goes from one to eight. And then insanity. He actually gets nine because of stone nose, but the cap is eight. And then insanity, he gets... Departing, um, one, two, three, four, five. So it gets five insanity, so it goes from zero to five, which is great. Okay, and then what are his stats defensively? His armor and all that shit. All right, 
So I'll do the weapon first. No, I'll do the armor first. So the armor, it's uh, five to head, four to, the, to arms, four to body, five to waist, four to legs. And then nothing else that says depart. And then the weapon is speed two, luck zero, evasion is two, strength is five plus one is a six and accuracy is a six i've read that correctly because i was talking next up you have sona who also has a plus one evasion token and that's from rhythm chaser sona i got again during summit phase from my board game captain sonar so sona that's what i took it from my inspiration this time around all right, so the evasion token I'll keep here because this is only during uh, temporary. Whereas permanent stats, I put below the squares. And then in the squares, that's their permanent stats on top of whatever is currently in their gear grid. So whenever I calculate the prim primary weapon or the armor, I just look at the boxes and then I tabulate any plus and minus tokens on top of that. A little bit of math. Okay, so... Her armor is rawhide, so it's two everywhere. And then she gets, let's see, anything that says depart. Yes. Uh, plus two survival departing. So she gets one, two, three, four, five, six, seven survival. So she goes from one to eight. And then, and then. Insanity is one, two, three, four. So it goes from zero to four in insanity. Oh, but Stone Nose is plus one, so that's five. Just like uh, talking. All right, then what's the stats? Okay, so this is using the bow. So that's uh, speed two, luck zero. Evasion is, the gear gives, uh, plus two, and then has two, so evasion is actually four. Strength is three plus one is a four, and then accuracy is a seven. All right. And again, this is just the departure bonuses. Then I'll go around the horn and do the arrival bonuses. So her evasion is actually four plus one, so her evasion is actually a five. And you add that on top of whatever the monsters accuracy is so you know like typically it's a two it hits on a two plus that means it would hit on a seven plus which is great talkins is a would be a four plus in that case and this if there actually was a two and this would be a seven plus so this character even though it had it can get hit harder than these guys the fact that it has high evasion can dodge attacks and can re um, cycle survival is pretty good defensive also. Okay, so Joy, um, anything that says depart? Nope. Uh, yes, the fecal cell. Plus one survival, plus a lot. She's already at seven, so she goes to eight. You can only go to your limit. Uh, she doesn't have the uh, screaming antelope this time. This time she's got the cat armor. So she goes from five, four, two, three, everywhere. And then the weapon is the Qatar, which I changed also as using uh, blood paint. So you can attack, you add the speed of both weapons together, and then you can attack with both weapons, like like you saw during the last hunt. Um, last hundred years um, showdown was devastating in a good way. Okay, so... Oh, wait, what's the insanity edition? The insanity edition is uh, four. One, two, three, four. So it goes from four to eight insanity. Again, you have to be three plus, be insane. And then the weapon is the guitar, which is speed four. Actually, with the white line arm complete set, it's actually speed five. Speed five, 
Actually, it's higher than that because it's one, two, three, four, five, and then plus two is seven. Speed's seven, and I can attack twice. It's awesome. Luck is a one from the gear. Evasion is a zero, uh, but can do fecal self and make it so not a threat if I wanted to. Strength is three plus two from the whole set bonus plus one. Three is a six. And then accuracy is a seven. Accuracy is really kind of high, but you're, again, you're, you're rolling a shit ton of dice. Okay, last is Oko, who has anything on departure. Nope. Oh, you know what? On the stone nose, that's a rival bonus, not departure. So I, I, have to, I add that prematurely. So I'll add it now, but I'll flip it just to make sure I don't count it again. I just realized I accidentally counted it. Okay, so. But I'll do it to be consistent, but I'll just, then I'll take it away. Okay, so. Oko gets... Uh... Oh, and I forgot to add this, the insanity from the, uh, well, that's on a red, 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 that's on a red, doesn't matter. Okay. okay, so it's one, two, three, four, five, insanity, so it's 24. <coughs> Survival gets, um, <coughs> um, one, two, three, four, five, two plus five is a seven. Five and four everywhere. Got it. And then the weapon you're using is a spear, which is speed. Two plus one is a three. Luck is zero. Evasion, zero. Strength is six plus, I'm sorry, three plus four is a seven. Accuracy is a six plus a bonus of three accuracy, so that's a three. Okay. So that's, that's the departure. Now we're doing arrival bonuses. On arrival, everyone gets one insanity and one survival because the musical instruments, and then whatever they say on the gear grid that has the word uh, ar arrival. I'm not, and I'm not doing stone notes because I've already calculated those accidentally already. All right, so again, we'll go around the horn. So now I'm looking for arrival. On arrival, gain three insanity, so it goes from five to eight. And it's already at eight survival. Um, Sona gets Oh, oh yeah, but I forgot the, the bonus from the harp too. So that's not five to eight, it's five to nine, because then you also get from music instruments, so it's nine insanity. Uh Sona Gets one insanity, so it goes from five to six. Joy um, is already at eight survival, and anything else that says arrival, no. But does get one insanity, so it goes from eight to nine. And then Oko has Scream Embracers and the Musical Instruments. So it gets four Insanity and one Survival because its cap is eight. So it goes to eight Survival and then gets one, two, three, uh, four Insanity. So it goes from 24 to 28 Insanity. So that's me like you have 28 Insanity and Immortal. Man, you're a tank. So now I have two people to have that tank ability, which is very cool. Okay, so to go over again, all because this would be some of the main stuff I'm doing in the game, is Taken has eight survival and nine insanity. Sona has eight survival, six insanity. Joy has eight survival, nine insanity. And Oko has eight survival, 28 insanity. And Oko has immortal. And everybody has extra sense. And Sona also has Rhythm Chaser, meaning gets a plus one evasion token. So I have some pretty good defense shit going on here. I have Insanity Tank, 
I have a Dodge tank, and then everyone has extra sense, so they have more opportunities to spend survival to dodge. So this is great defensively. Why do I care? Because the strategy I'm doing this time around is not even trying to kill the hand, but just survive until he gets bored with us and decides to leave. So if we survive his trials, that's what I'm going for this time around, as opposed to actually trying to wound him. Okay. So we've done all of our bonuses, now we set up. Monster Controller, I'll have the first person be the, the person who's the best tank of the Ogo. All right, so the hand goes here. And again, the hand takes up four squares, not even though it looks like you only take up one. So what I'm gonna do go back is actually to put the platform on top of a platform that that's, has the same base as like one of the white lines of screaming antelopes. That way it's easier to visualize that, you know, this guy is actually on four squares because it'll be a bigger uh, base circle. All right, so the hand goes there. Everyone else I set up. I got a Canthus I can pick up. I got an ore I definitely want to pick up. Actually, I want to pick up everything. Um, and I also want to stay, have everyone encircle him. That way, if he does one of his ghost steps, he only goes through one person instead of multiple. And I want to be close enough also so that I'm always uh, a threat and in range to attack because I don't want him to proc penalty at all. I want to be in range and have everybody encircle him. Um, and then I also want to actually not attack him at all because, again, I want to try to just survive the trials. And the, th the trend that I noticed before is every time I attacked him, he got bonus attacks on all of us or multiple people. And then whereas initially you can, wound, you can, you can add tokens to impossible eyes, then when you, when you, after you give him a couple of those tokens – then he starts proccing the auras from the eyes, which then makes it impossible to attack. And then he gets these, again, free attacks or penalties to people that attack with the particular aura when their eye is open. So it's like, eh, fuck it. I have great survivability. I'm just trying to survive. Because I, I don't need to loot anything off him. I just want to get through the encounter. And it looks like for fighting this monster anyway, if I just play his game, I can get through it. He's obviously way more capable in combat and hard to overcome. <clears throat> so, so what, what, what am I going to do? Uh, I start off on this side, anywhere on this border here. So we're going to have Oko, who has the spear, to start here because I want to pick up one of these acanthus. I want the other person who has the bone club, I'm saying that this acts as a bone club, to start here because the people with um, screaming bracers have an advantage when trying to pick up Acanthus, so I want them to pick up the Acanthus. And then, of course, I want someone to pick up the ore, which, who do I have left? I have these two. Um... I think I'll have, this will be Joy, who will pick up the ore. And then we'll start off the tanking. I could do it with uh, Sona, since she's got high evasion, to start close to as well. But not directly against, like right there. Cool, so that's what we're, what we're gonna do. And so far, the only person with a temporary token, again, is Sona with plus one evasion. So I have to make sure when I look at these, any of these characters, including the monster, when you look at their base stats, to also calculate the, any tokens as well. All right, cool. A lot of talking, a lot of explanation. I'm just going to take a short break and just get a sip of uh, some sippy cup, and then we'll get started. I've already shuffled the decks and everything, so... ready to go. All right. 
right, so we're defending our home. And like what's typical with the Nemesis counter is unlike a quarry is the uh, home team goes first. So we get tech, what's counted like an ambush round. Whenever you do uh, rounds, the monster always goes first. But because it's us defending our homeland, we get a uh, kind of like an ambush. Uh, what was it called in D and D? Uh, like a surprise attack. You get a free attack before you actually do the battle. So we get to go first. But the the round, what stuff happens in the round? It's important to deter, to indicate whether you're in a round or and where you're at in the round because of certain abilities. Like you can only use survival actions, one survival action per round. So the fact that I do stuff now as the survivors, I can do it again during Monta's turn because it's it's a new round. It resets. I can spend as much survival as I want, but you can only do each survival action once per round, unless you have ex something that says otherwise, like extra sense, which allows me to do dodge twice in a round. But I'm definitely gonna use counters to keep track of how many times I do dodge. Um, okay, cool. Let's do it. So we're gonna go first. So the first thing I'm gonna do is pick up the viable shit. And the most viable thing is the ore. So I'm gonna do that first. So I, that takes an action. Again, I'm gonna use green for actions and endeavors for showing someone's knocked down and other tokens to show if I've used dodge is what I'm gonna do. Okay, so she's gonna use her action to try to mine the ore. And it says roll 1d10 and if, you, if you're carrying a pickaxe, instead you can roll 2d10 and add the results. So that's, you know, I definitely want to get a pickaxe. Okay, so I'm going to get roll one dice. We got a three, and it says one, three, find nothing. Ah, oh, all I need was a four or greater. Son of a fuck. Oh, but it, it was a good chance. Worth worth the chance. This is the only second time ever I've actually gotten that ore thing during the uh, showdown. Okay, and now she can move. And again, I, I want to start getting people in range just so I'm in range. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. I want to make sure I'm in, in range in case I have to do stuff. Maybe I'll go like just barely off the side or something like that. All right. Um, does she have any other abilities she wants to do? No. I could definitely do fecal salve. It just... She, but it takes an action to do it, and I don't have Surge. And that's one reason I want to do Surge. Because surge allows you to either attack twice around, or the fact that you can do some sort of utility move and also an attack. So that's definitely something, again, like I stated, there's Summit Phase, something I want to gun for next for my innovations, as well as after getting that one, also gunning for anything that adds more sur survival and anything that gives me that special scrap innovation because that's cheaper than doing the special innovation f from the weapon crafter it's more affordable okay um next i'm going to pick up the acanthus so i'll do this one first which is i roll 1d10 and add two to my roll because of screaming bracers so that's an eight plus two is a ten so i do get an acanthus awesome on Taken. Which actually, since I have this, no, I'll put it here. That's fine. Okay, so that's that. And then, and then. Uh, for his movements, go one, two, three, four, five, because I want to eventually get close enough to pick up the other ones. And I, I'm I'm ranging this so if he moves here, uh, I want to be close enough so that I don't get rammed. Because he'd probably move here, that's closest. And then if he moves here, I don't want these people to be too, too close on the vertical or the horizontal to me. Okay, so next I want to try the other canthus. That's a six plus two is an eight, which is a success a success. So I get another fresh canthus. So I have two acanthus, 
thus far. And then we're going to move. And, and, and in case you haven't already noticed, everything along the edge here is supply. So like there isn't a camp that's here or over there. I, if you haven't noticed, like I have all my dice, all of my other tokens, all of my tiles that I could possibly use, that I've used before, and then any um, damage tokens, where it's, whether it's mental or uh, bleeds, physical. Okay, so now we're going to move one, two, three, four, five. Uh, but I don't want to be in the same uh, lane, so I'll, I'll move instead of five, I'll go five. I was here, right? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, so I'll go there. That way everyone's in a different lane. In case he does something like, I'm going to attack this person and sweep across. And then, Mr. Uh, Bowguy could also do uh, the Rawhide Headband. So I'll definitely do that because I can look at the top two AI cards and I can change the order of when things happen, which might be critical depending on what it is. Because if, what I say, what I mean, why I say that is, if my characters have to be in a certain position or do a certain action, I wanna make sure that I have the ability to do that. And right now, all my characters are kind of far away from each other, right? Um, so actually I'll do that first, and then I'll move. So I'll do the raw head headband as an action look at the top two AI cards and see what he's possibly gonna do next. So he's got line up and bullet jabs. So line up means I have to be a certain area in front of him, which I'm not gonna be able to do because he attacks everyone directly in front of him, right? The problem there is I have to be able to move there. So you have to spend an action to go from an adjacent spot to there. And my character is right now too far away. So I definitely don't want that to be first. So I think I'll start with bullet jabs. Bullet jabs said survival of the most blue affinities, which means he would attack Oko, who's over here. But then if he does that, I then have to move everybody to this side, which would also be hard to do, because it would be facing this direction. No, actually that's not true. He would, because he does, he does go step, and would be on this side and attacks. So he'd be kind of far away. Whereas if I did line up right now, everybody on the next turn would just have to move and then action. So I guess line up is the better one to do it first because it, I'll have two turns. I'll have one turn to get into position before it happens. The reason why I want to get into position is because it says if the monster does not attack every living survivor, he does penalty. I don't want him to do penalty uh, because yes, even though I he does rib damage, I could cure it with bed. That's true. I can cure everybody actually that settlement phase with bed but the problem is i lose survival and during the penalty everyone goes down to zero survival and that's terrible because that means i can't use survival for anything movement dodging attacks that'd be really bad um i should be able to get range this round because it just takes an action to move here and i'm just going to move an action if i'm reading that correctly So I'll actually, I will have lineup be first. And then I'll move, since I know that's going to happen. What that also means is I want people to get in line first. And it may actually work out, because lineup said, oh, we have to be within two spaces. So I can't pick up the acanthus yet. I'll, I need to have people in one of these six squares here. So good to know. All right, so I'll go one, two, three, four. I'll go one a little bit too far just because I know where I have to be actually is right here. 
one, two, three, four, five. But then I'm in the same lane, but I know, I know with lineup, he's just gonna sit there. So I know I'm safe. Cool, all right, so now it is the monster's turn. And again, for affinities, which you can see in case that comes into play, I have one that has white and three blue. And everyone has one blue affinity except for Oko, who has uh, three. Okay, so the monster is going to do, big surprise, lineup. When this card, is, and I'll show you an example of what the card looks like, but don't worry about trying to read it because I'll read it to you. Line up. When this card is drawn face down, the monster casually opens his arms. When this card is drawn face up, then he, he checks, makes sure people are in the right spot, and then he has certain triggers if certain eyes are open, and right now all the eyes are closed. Okay, so we know he's going to do line up next time. All right, so now it's our turn. So I want to, I need to line up in front of him in one of these six spaces and hope I don't instantly die or something stupid, which is entirely possible. Okay, so I'm going to move and then use it a, a, an action. Or do I want to not use him? Uh, no, I'll do that. We'll do move, action. Again, he takes up four spaces, so he's actually on all four of these squares. So he's moving there. She's going to do a move. Well, that's true. Actually, I don't have to be on the face. I don't have to be. I just have to be within, within this line. So what I mean by that is I could have her move... Uh, but I, I, it looks like he has to attack everyone, so I can't, like, see I'm not a threat or something. So I'll do that. Um, Oko will go one, two, three, four. And... Uh... Everybody's insane. I was like, I could have him do Screaming Horns. That could give everyone plus one movement and plus one insanity. Might as well. So I'll do Screaming Horns. So anyone that's not insane gets one insanity, but everybody is insane. So everyone gets plus one movement for the remainder of the round. So that means... Uh, uh, Talking can move six spaces instead of five. Just in case. But he can go... One, two, three, four, five. That way, everybody's lined up. All right, so that's the end of the round. So first was Oko. Now we're at the top of the next round, and the target's going to be uh, Taken. Well, if gets targeted, which will. Okay. So now we do now we now we draw a line up again, but it's face up, so that means we activate it. So when this card is drawn face up, target and attack all survivors in the right spot, which is directly in front of them with in a line that's six spaces long. Everybody's in there. So he does speed two, accuracy two, six damage, and then triggers every eye and gets different things that happen depending on every eye that's open but all of the eyes are currently closed. The eyes only open if you if you triggered impossible eyes with certain affinities, but I'm not triggering impossible eyes at all. Because this is if you wounded a monster, but I'm not attacking, so that means the eyes will stay closed. Okay. 
All right, so I'll just go from left to right, but I'll, I'll use a uh, bleed token. Uh, actually, I'll use these red tokens to indicate if someone's already been attacked, so I keep track. So first we're attacking uh, Taken, who is the monster controller, so then gets plus one insanity. And I know you're not supposed to use monster controller if you're playing by yourself, but I don't give a shit because it's a, it's a cool way that you can get more insanity and it's stupid that you can have two to four players, but you can't do it with one player. So it just, it's dumb. So. All right, so he rolls two dice. I'll put all the dice over here since I'm just gonna be surrounding him for the rest of the game. So it's speed two, accuracy two, Hawkins evasion is a two, so he hits on a four plus. Okay, so that's a one, and it's an eight, and I'm gonna spin a survival to dodge that attack. So what it says is not that he successfully hits, it just says, does he attack everybody? Yes. Doesn't matter if it's successful, he just has to do it. To spend one survival and talking to completely dodge. Okay. Next up is Joy. Evasion zero, so hits on a two plus. That's a two and a, and a ten. Uh, so that's two hits. Let's see what they are. And six damage which is enough to go to severe injury immediately because I only have three and your body can take two hits. So that I mean, it's me like, that's a devastating attack. So it's six to chest, I'm sorry, six to waist and six to head. So, and she does have extra sense, so she could spend two survival and completely dodge. Okay. Next up we have uh, who is it? Who is that? Sona. Who has the most evasion. She's got five e evasion. So I can see hits on a seven plus. Uh, we got a ten and a four. So that's uh, one hit to the chest and I'll spit and I'll Roll to see if I can. I'm, I am the spend survival, but I can roll to see if I get it for free on a six plus. It's a seven, so I do, do, dodge it for free. Awesome. So oh, that's right, and I want to keep track of how many times to spend dodge. So you use dodge once, use the dodge once. I mean, twice, twice and once. So even though, you, you, again, has a lot of survival you can spend, you can only do an action f once per round, but dodge, you can only do twice per round. So like, even though Sona can regenerate survival, I can only do this action one more time during this round. Okay, so next up is, uh, I did do this wrong. It was, he spent once, she spent twice, he spent once, she, he, she, he. All right, now it's to Oko, who has no evasion, so hits on a two plus. Uh, two hits. Uh, and that's the head and the chest. Now remember, Oko, even though has survival and extra sense, because it is immortal, has to take all the damage to insanity until he's no longer insane. Once he's not insane anymore, then he can spend survival and use physical armor as usual. So he's gonna take 12 damage to insanity. So it goes from 28 to 16.
because it cannot spend survival and has to take it as insanity. And then everyone got attacked, so he doesn't do penalty, and that's our turn. Okay. All right, so the first thing I want to do before anybody moves is I want to have her, that's a her, right? Yeah. Do rawhead headband, to again, look at the next two coming up to see what order I want to do it. That way I can get everyone in the right position. So I'm going to do her ability with the rod headband to look at the top two cards. We got Thunderbolt right and Bullet Jabs. Thunderbolt right will go to the closest threat and it will be a very devastating attack but has a high chan higher chance to miss. Whereas bullet jabs, he'll attack many times, but only do two damage. And goes after someone with the most blue affinities. So when he, if he, for Thunderbolt, he'll go after the closest threat, movement-wise. Bullet jabs, he'll go after, period, the person with the most blue affinities, with, which is Oko. All right? So the person that I want to be, so I know Oko is going to take bullet jabs. Thunderbolt right, I want to be the person that has the highest chance to survive because he it's speed two, damage seven, but I could spend survival to completely ignore it. So I know Sona would probably be the best for Thunderbolt because can regenerate survival and spend it for free. Bullet jabs has to go to Oko. That's probably what I'm going to do. The split. So the question then is, if I'm doing uh, bullet jabs, well, bullet jabs is going after Oko. Thunderbolt, I want to be, I want to go after, yeah, Sona. So I think I'll just do Thunderbolt first because she's in the right position. She's the closest. So as long as everyone else is beside him or behind him and not in the blind spot, she'll be the primary target who I want to be the target of Thunderbolt. So I do Thunderbolt and then Bullet Jabs. Okay. So she'll just stay there. All right, then everyone else, I'm going to sense, uh, he's gonna be doing Ghost Step and I wanna pick up Acanthus, it's just, just pick it up now while you have the opportunity to do so. I know I don't have to because I made that rule that I can roll once. It's just the fact that in emergency, uh, well, if it's dry to Canthus, you can use it as a reaction to save you from the severe injury table. Fresh Acanthus, you can only use it in, uh, in between actions. So it'd have to be like after the, the attack, but you can fully heal any one area of all of your armor and all damage, which is cool. So it's still good to have just in case to protect somebody. So that's why I want to protect, get it during the showdown and not just chance it afterwards because I, I might actually need to, it to survive. So I'll do a uh, Oko, a move here, roll for a campus. I get plus two. Four plus two is a six, which is what? Find something tasty and consume it. If you do, gain plus one survival. These are at max. Okay. And then, well, I've already done action move. Okay, so next I'll do... Uh, Talking. Roll for Canthus. Four plus two is a six. Again, nothing happens, but gains one survival, which is good. So it goes from seven back to eight. All right. And then the last person. So again, like, the closest threat would be the, the lowest, least number of turns and space to move. So it would still be this person, but I kind of want to get in range because he's going to do a ghost step and then attack. 
So I think I want to have her actually move backwards. So I'll go one, two, three, four, five. I think that's what I want to do. Because then he's going to move back and attack from here, this direction, and that way I'll be surrounded. All right, cool. So that's it for uh, this round. I'm just going to take a quick bathroom break, and then we'll be at the top of the next round. So again, like, I'm just trying to survive. I will survive. Be back in a couple minutes. Right time back. So we have two people with the Canthus, and we're running, we're doing great as far as having survival and not taking damage, so we're doing great. Because that was the problem that happened last time I fought him, is when I realized that I had to do more of this duration stuff, everyone had no survival and may have already taken hits, and, and then just got one shot up by these huge blasts. So, just like, alright, let's just try to maintain. All right, so it's the monster's turn. Oh, wait. Did I? Yeah, that's right. I already looked at the top two cards. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, he's doing uh, Thunderbolt Right. The survivor with the most red affinities, which is nobody. Otherwise, the closest threat. So, he's going to do Ghost Step and then attack the target. So, Ghost Step, he moves through and then turns and attacks from behind. And that does, I believe, was it one brain damage? Yeah, one brain damage. So, Sona goes from six to five insanity. That's another reason why I want to trade off, because if someone gets too low on insanity, I want to change who's the target of the insanity. 
That way, no one because you can die potentially if you have take brain enough brain damage, and you don't have insanity. So, eventually, I might cycle and have someone else be the target, because I have other people with more insanity. Like Talkin's got ten, nine, sixteen, but she's only got five. So, so for example, she she can only like survive like, you know, five safely past ghost steps. Okay, so Thunderbolt right. Speed 2, Accuracy 4, but she's got the highest um, evasion, which is 5. So 4 plus 5 is a 9, so he hits on a 9+. plus. He rolled a 10 and a 1, so that's 1 hit. 2, the foot of which she will dodge for free. So completely dodge that attack. Awesome. See? This is why it's good to have survival, and this is why it's good to have rawhide gear, because you, you could spend it for free. That's like, I don't know, rawhide gear, as long as you just don't get wailed on, and you can dodge all the attacks, it's actually really good, especially with extra sense. So, that's why I was thinking about, yes, I want to upgrade this person's gear, but do I wait necessarily to, till I get the, the uh, Phoenix gear, or do I go more quickly towards the leather gear. And it's like, I don't know, she's, the fact that that's actually pretty good, I, I might try to hold out just for the uh, Phoenix gear because it's basically the same amount of leather. So if I just get the other resources, I can make it instead of making a leather set and then a uh, Phoenix set, which will be twice as much leather. Now that's the idea anyway. Because it's gonna take a while to get that much hide. Seven hides. When in addition, I want to innovate, you know, that's a lot of, a lot of materials. Material. But we'll see. Okay, so it's our turn. We survived. So again, definitely what I would want to do first. Actually, the target at the time was actually Sona. So actually, she got back that insanity because it would have changed targets. But she actually goes to the six. Okay. Um is I want to see what he's going to do. That way I make sure I'm in the right position. So I'm going to spend the action and look at the top two AI cards. And see, that's the thing. Like, if I had the Phoenix gear, the Phoenix crown, that I can cycle an AI card, I can make this fight go faster. Um, and then also if you have a shield or a, or a uh, sheath, you can block more attacks. Because you can block means you can cancel a uh, attack roll. So it's like, if you had that stuff, that I might go for the wound strategy. But because you can just get rid of the, the ones that hit like a truck and just gun for the damage. Or just gun more quickly for um, get through the fight. Anyway. So we got bullet jabs and rude slap. Bullet jabs, we know what that does. Rude slap... Uh-oh, my kid's looking at me. I might have to feed him before I <laughs> continue. Uh, yeah, actually, I think I may have to do that. He's, he's giving me the, the look like, where's my shit? Do you want some kitty ice cream? You want some kitty ice cream? Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Let me see if you guys can see my kitty. This is a kitty. That's a kitty. That is a kitty. <laughs> All right. We'll get you some kitty ice cream. Which is actually chicken baby food. But he loves it. He loves it. That's his treat every day. Right. One second, guys. Just like Egypt, you know, it's like it's all about the kitties. It's all about it's a kitties world. There you go, little buddy. <clears throat> all right, back to it. Okay, so rude slap says that someone has to stand right in front of him on his left-hand side. Someone has to stand right here. 
Uh, when the card is drawn, it's face down. It activates when he's in the right spot. So someone basically just has to stand there and again, speed two, and it hits like a truck. So the fact that it does not involve um, Ghost Step, I think it might be better just to have it again be Sona because it can regenerate survival. So I'll go ahead and do it. So I'll do road, road, road slap. Have that, have that, have that be first. Have that, have that. And then I'll go ahead and move into position. Then everybody else, I just want to be close enough. And what's also good, the fact that I have two people screaming horns is let's say Sona keeps tanking, let's say even the, the entire get fight and gets to low insanity, then both then the people screaming horns can activate to give boost to insanity again to, so that she's insane. So basically they will keep regenerating her brain damage and then she can keep regenerating her survival. So actually she might be the best tank option, actually. Certain people might get still get hit regardless based on affinities, like Oko's could keep getting blasted, but you know, do what I can. Oh, so, all right, so everyone else is gonna move. Um, I don't have any other interesting abilities to activate. So we're just gonna get close, which I'm, I'm kinda in a good spot. So maybe everyone will stay there. Because I don't wanna be adjacent in case he does a reaction, but I wanna be close enough so that if he moves, oh, you know what, I know what I'm gonna do. Because well, no, he doesn't do a ghost step. That's going to be later. Yeah. No, I'll keep everybody there. It's fine. The only thing I know what's going to happen eventually is when he does do bullet jabs, he's going to go after Oko. If I do that one next. Which I could do. So if he does that one next, everyone's going to move this direction afterwards. So maybe I'll start to cycling people over here. So let's go one, two, three, four... We'll go like one, two, three, four, five. Sure. All right, so now it's the monster's turn. And the monster got rude slap. When this card is drawn face down, the monster points at the ground. So he's pointing right there. Got it. All right. Now it's our turn again. So I'm gonna go ahead and do his ability to, to look at the next two, which I know it's bolt slaps, rude slaps, so there's no point in doing that. So I'm just gonna get people in range, because if I do bullet jabs next, he could go after Ogo behind, so I wanna get people in range. So I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five, and I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five, And I think that'll be it. All right, so now it's the monster's turn. And now we do Rude Slap, which is, when this card is drawn face up, target and attack and survivor in the right spot, which she's in. Speed two, accuracy two, damage six. Has triggers, if there's eyes open, all the eyes are closed. And then if the monster does not attack, it does penalty, but will be able to attack. And then the swap, this changed two more times, so it went one, two. Okay. Um, so it's attacking Sona. So that's two dice. It's seven and a one. Uh, this accuracy was two, but I add five. So that means you have to hit on a seven or a one, so that's one hit. To the chest. And let's see if I can, can't, um, well, these went away. No one spent survival this round. Uh, let's see if she can dodge it for free. It's a seven, so she dodges it for free. So look at that. Dodging for free, and then the rest of the team can heal up her insanity. It's like, wow. I might be on to something. This is actually working. Okay. 
now it's our turn. Again, I'm gonna do my action first to see what's coming up in case there's something more fortuitous. I know one's bullet jabs, next one is, who knows? We got bullet jabs and soft chuckle. Soft chuckle says, uh, let's see here. Hmm. Soft chuckle is actually pretty bad. So I definitely want to do bullet jabs first. Only because soft chuckle, which I'll read to you when it actually triggers, but it uh it does a lot of brain damage. And people lose survival. So it's like it's a it's a pretty bad card. What's good about the card is it does say it you flip all lenses to close, so it's an opportunity to do more damage, but no. I'll do bullet jabs first, because that's what I'm preparing for. So then we'll get in range for bullet jab. So both for bullet jab is gonna go after the person with the most blue affinities, which is this guy here. So I'll go one, two, three, four, five. Then she'll go one, two. And then this guy will go one, two. Okay, I think that's what I wanna do because he's I know exactly what he's gonna do. All right, so now it's the monster's turn. Who's gonna do bullet jabs? The survivor with the most blue affinities is the target. He does ghost step and then attacks. So he's going to ghost step, which is on limited range. He's gonna turn, pass through, and stop here. So uh, Oko gets one brain damage. So it goes from 16 to 15. And target now is talking, so he doesn't get anything. 16 to 15. And then he attacks five times, accuracy two, and he's got no evasion. So this could actually obliterate the majority of his insanity because I can't spend survival. So he's got to he's got to basically roll a one in order to not hit. He rolls five dice, so this could be a lot of damage. But fortunately, because all of the eyes are closed, nothing else happens. But it's going to hit like a truck. Well, it's, it's, good. it's going to hit a little bit, but hell of times. Okay, so we got no one, so they're all hits. So it's five hits. And I would roll where it hits on the body, but it doesn't matter, because it all goes to insanity. So that's five times two, so that's ten damage to insanity, so it goes from 15 to five. But it was good that he had it, right? That was a pretty good tank. 15 to five. Okay, now it's our turn. So again, I definitely, the first thing I wanna do is see what my options are. So, we're gonna use Rawhide Headband. Look at the top two cards. Uh, we got bullet, uh, another bullet jabs and soft chuckle. So, uh, so what's going to happen here if I if he's going to go after Oko again is he'll hit the insanity. But then once he's on his next attack that he's not insane, I can then spend survival 
to stop the wound. So it's soft chuck and bull jabs. I'll go ahead and do bull jabs again to get out of the way. Okay, so that means he's going to pass through and be over here. So I want to just rotate people back. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five. And one, two, three, four, five. And we'll just go one, two, three. Uh, well, one, two, I don't want to get too close. Well, but I can move Oko also. I just don't want him to pass through anybody else. So I'll, I'll just keep doing what I'm doing. So maybe I'll just like move up. Uh, no, I'll stay there. Now it's the monster's turn again. The hand. Who's gonna do another bullet jab? So he's gonna do a ghost step to here and then turn. But does he go behind or does he just go closest? Let's see here. No, I just said he he get, he passes through the target and then turns. Okay. If it said go through the blind spot of me, then he would go like through. Okay, so he does one damage to Oko. So that goes from five to four. And notice, this is someone at one point that was at 28 insanity. So it's like, you know, this is, this is good. He's uh, tanky. And now he does his attack. He attacks five times speed two. Because he's going after someone with the most blue affinities again, which is still him. Oh, I'm sorry, it's, it's yeah, one, because this is a blue and a green. So it's one blue, one blue, three blue, and no affinity. Okay, so we got a one and, and other stuff. So it's four hits. So for, for this, we will roll the damage because it will matter. So we got three to chest and one to hand. And remember, Oko can only spend two dodges. Okay, so I think one of the chest will go to insanity. So it take two damage to insanity. So now he is not insane, meaning now he could spend survival and damage go is assigned as normal. Okay. So there's three more hits. Two to chest and one to hand. So I'll cancel one of the chest with a uh well, so, so basically it's three hits, but I can only absorb I call it cancel two. Um But chest has twice as much chance to come up than any other place. So I think I'll cancel both chests and take it to the hand. So I'll take two damage to the hand. So I'll go four to two. And then I'll cancel both of those chests and go from eight to six survival. Because it has extra sense. Cool. We're surviving. I will survive. Survived another bullet jab, but now is blew through all of that insanity. But you know, it, it, everyone's still up. All right, so now it's our turn. So again, I want to use her first to see what the hell he's capable of doing. So we know one of them is soft chuckle, and then another one is full powered flick. Which is, uh, I'll show you the card, but I'll read it to you. Don't worry about it. When this card is drawn face down, the monster proudly raises a single finger.
and then he's going to go after someone with the most armor points total. And that target will be doomed and have speed 2, damage 4. Oh, wow. It's a good thing also I don't I don't get knocked back because this says when you knock back somebody if they go to if they hit the edge of the board instead of stopping they fly into the darkness never to be seen again. <laughs> Holy shit. But fortunately knockback won't happen because that's only if there was a red eye open and all the eyes are closed. Okay, so he's going to go after the person with the most armor points. So since Oko just spent armor points that means the person he's he's will attack will be uh, talking, because he has the the gear with the most armor points is the screaming antelope and Oko took a little bit of damage to armor, so it, he will go off to talking. So I, I'll definitely have that go to the top. We'll do that first. So he's he can go after the person with uh, this guy here, and he's gonna do a ghost step the whole nine yards. Um, so knowing that, I don't want anyone to be near him, but at the same time, be close enough to, to be able to maneuver around. I think I'll go one, two, three. Uh, and then stop. She'll go, uh... She's kind of stuck there. So maybe I'll, I'll have people circle. Well, I mean, I have to move her first because technically she moved first. So I'll go one, two, three, four, five. And then... I know it's temporarily safe, so I think I'll go up one. And then one, two, three, four, five. And then I'll go one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so that's all of her movements. Now it's the monster's turn. So monster draws, full powered flick. When this is drawn face down, the monster probably raises a single finger. And that's the duration. So now it's our turn. So we know he's gonna target uh, Talkin. So I just wanna get in range. And he's gonna do a, a Cannot spend survival, and then we'll do a ghost step. So I want to get a little bit closer. Get a little closer. That way he goes here. And then he will be go there. And then one, two, three, four, or something. And then one, two, Something like that. So I'm encircling because I know he's going to be here. I'm in range in case I have to do something weird. And I don't have to look at the top two cards again because I know what they are. This one, just when you first draw it, it's turned and then placed on top. And then if you draw it again when it's face up, shit happens. Okay, so now it's the monster's turn. And the, this now goes to Joy, but we'll be targeting Taken. So full powered flick. Target is doomed, meaning cannot spend survival. Um, so I'll go ahead and give two, showing that can't spend survival. And uh, just, just that way I know, you know, can't spend any dodge because I've got two dodge spendy things there. All right, so it, uh, he does a ghost step and then this attack. 
the ghost step, he goes through and turns. So Taken takes one in damage that goes from 10 to 9 insanity. And then we do the attack. And he's the person with the second most um, evasion. We had 0, 0, 5, and 2. So this attack hits on a 2 plus. That means now it hits on a 4 plus. Uh, that's two hits. And I cannot spend survival. So hopefully this doesn't kill Talkin, but it's possible because I can't spend survival. So that's to waste and the head, and it's four damage. Fortunately, this person I gave screaming um, antelope gear before had zero. So that's good. Okay, so it's four damage to head and four to... I'm not to chest. Four to head and four to waste. So if I have waste, I have five, so that goes to one. And then chest, that's four damage. It goes from five to one. All right. We're doing it. We're surviving. We are surviving. I mean, we are survivors after all, right? All right, so now it's our turn. So again, I want to start off and to see what the hell he can do. So I get people in the position. And we only have four, uh, four cards left. If we get to the last card, it's a good thing. Well, it's... I'll end the fight, in any case. So we got Soft Chuckle. Again, that's just so devastating. I want to save it to the very end. The reason why I want to stay up to the very end is because I don't want to get attacked when I can't spend Survival or Insanity. That's why I want to save this to the end if possible, because that way there's, he can't take an advantage of the Soft Chuckle, is the thing. Okay, so take your best shot. Good, good. How's the song go? Take, come, it's not come out. It's come on, take your best shot. I don't know. <laughs> Fire away. All right. So again, it's got eyeball shit, but I don't have any eyeballs open, so I don't have to worry about it. Unless he has a card that opens eyeballs. Uh, but the problem with this card is after he does this, you then draw another AI. So. It's either I do soft chuckle first and then take your best shot and something else. Or I could do soft chuckle and then keep doing other cards other than take your best shot. That way after best shot, we'll just then immediately do the last card. Hmm. Yeah, another problem with soft, soft Chuckle is you'll full move away from the monster. And so that means if that's out of range from an attack, that can make it so you don't satisfy his ability to go after the target, which could be bad. So that's another reason we'll save that to the end. But the problem with take your best shot is the placement of people could be bad. But, hmm. shit, I don't know. I just really don't want to do soft chuckle when he could still do attacks. Because what happens was if he does five brain damage and then starts doing ghost step, that's additional damage, right? But five brain damage... Like, I don't think everyone even has five insanity. Well, like, they, they currently do. So it's like, I kind of want to do that now. All right, so I think I'll do that order. I'll do soft chuckle first. Well, on the, other, on the other hand, if I do take your best shot first and then soft chuckle, I know immediately what the card's going to be. So when it's our turn again, I can see what the next card's going to be before it's played to get in the position. That's also true. All right, so I'll do it in this order. I'll do take your best shot first. So 
See, so, he, so he's going to move away from the most possible survivors. Oh no, he says he faces away from the most possible survivors and then moves one space. Okay, yeah, we'll do that first. Okay, that's Jordan. Got it. Okay, so now we're going to move. I think I'll just have her stay there. Then we'll go, like, maybe back one. And then, again, I'll just probably just have a little bit more breathing room. Uh, like that. And since I know he wants to face away and move one space, um, I'll just probably go, like, one, two, three. Four. Right. So now it's the monster's turn. And we see take your best shot. Okay, I'll just, I'm showing you the format. I'll read it to you. Don't worry about the colored stuff because none of that's triggering because none of the eyes are open. Uh, when this is drawn face down, the monster turns to face away from the most possible survivors, then it moves one space forward and crosses its arms. And it says, while this is in play, the monster gains minus 10 evasion. And if a trap card is revealed for any reason, then place the monster behind the revealer. And then you draw an additional AI card. So this is, this is out. And then he turns and moves one space. And now, He's going to do um, soft chuckle. And if I'm looking at this correctly, this would just be for this round that this is out. But I don't exactly know. Because if it's a trait, it stays out. If it's a duration, maybe I'll try looking up it right quick. Because... What I don't know is, does this stay out forever, and I played that wrong last time I fought him, or just for the end of the round? It doesn't say. Like, if it's a trait, you place it here, it's out for the rest of the showdown, but this doesn't say. So let me see if I can look that up. If I can't find out, then, uh... I'll just have to be for, for the round. Because that's how I played it last time. Let's see, so I'm looking up the word duration. Let's see if I can't. Duration cards are drawn twice. The first time a duration card is drawn before any win drawn face down. Got it. Then, instead of discarding it, place a duration card on top of the AI deck. The next time a monster AI card draws an AI card, it draws the duration card for a second time. Oh, oh, I see. The next AI card you draw is then itself. You, you, it, it comes face up, boom, and then the same round, you say, now take your best shot. That's what it is. Because then you draw it again. Wait, am I reading that properly? No, it just says in play. It doesn't say when drawn face up. Mm, let me go back. Because it's face down and in duration it says it stays on top. And then it says draw another AI card, so now this comes out. Okay, so it's so it's like this is its its own one turn. I think that's how it's played. I think. Okay, so take your best shot. We're not going to do anything. Great. So it's our turn. And rinse and repeat. We're going to look at the top two cards. Oh, but then what counts as it being in play? Is it just for the round? Let me go back. Some have persistent effects while they're face up on top of the AI deck, which is just that card. Okay, so we look at the top two. 
You got liver blow and soft chuckle. We know what soft chuckle does. Well, I'll tell you what soft chuckle does. Just because I've been alluding to it. It says, the noise fills the survivors with unprecedented dread. All non-death survivors lose one survival and roll d10. Add each survivor's courage to the result on a 15 plus. They are knocked down in fear. If it's lower than a f uh, 15, they, instead you, you take five brain damage and gain a minus one accuracy token from their shaking limbs and move full directly away from the monster. So that could be bad because that means you could be out of position when something else needs to happen, right? Because if there's no targets, then he does the penalty almost all the time. So liver blow, he's going after someone with the most green affinities, which is nobody, otherwise be the closest threat. So for that, I want to be someone who can tank. I don't want to be Oko. I could have it be Sona because he can regenerate survival, so I'll probably have it be Sona. So I'm trying to have the person with the bow be the target, and I'll do liver blow first. Okay, so I want to be the target. So I want to go one, two, three, four. And then he's going to go behind me and go step and then attack. But I could also have the target be somebody else with survival. It doesn't have to be her. Like, it could be Takin. Because he's got 9 insanity, 8 survival. Good. You know what? I think I will. So the person with the club is going to be the target. Yeah. So, yeah, fuck that. So we'll move, like, over here or something. And then we'll move one forward. We'll, move, we'll actually move two forward. And then we'll move one, two, three, four. And then one, two, three. Okay. Now it's the monster's turn. Because I, I don't want I want to have everyone have the same amount of insanity. And so I want to have some in case something bad happens, it doesn't wipe everybody, right? So he can he can take more insanity. He can still spend a lot of survival. So Alright, so next we got liver blow. Survivor with both green affinities, which is nobody, otherwise the closest threat, which is Taken. So it's going to do ghost step and then attack. Boom. So Taken takes one insanity, one damage to go nine to eight. And then the speed two, accuracy is a two, but evasion is also a two, so it, he hits on a four plus. Got a four and a two, so that's only one hit. The head, so it's five damage to head, so I will spend a survival. We'll do a dodge, so I can go from eight to seven. Survival, now it's our turn. Again, rinse and repeat. I'm gonna see what the card is. Well, I got three AI cards left. So the next two, we got Liver Blow and Soft Chuckle. So what's cool about this two is I could actually, I could actually completely avoid Soft Chuckle because I could change the order so I see this card first. So haha. -ha. So I can't do a little bit of alteration actually. Soft Chuckle, Soft Chuckle, Liver, liver Blow. I'll just do Liver Blow. Whoever's the closest, it's fine. Um, I think I'll, I'll try to have it be Joy this time. Because she can spend two survival and has nine insanity. That way everyone kind of has the same amount of insanity-ish. So Joy is uh, her. So if I want her to be the next target... Then I want to circle. So let's so she's she's just gonna move over here. So I'll go one, two, three, four, five. Then move her, go one, two, three, four, five. 
Uh, now I've got one, two, three, four. And again, I want it to, he's gonna go after the, tar, the closest. So, and he's gonna go behind. So I wanna move everyone around. So I go one, two, three, four, five. And then one, two, three, four, five. which are technically, and I can give him plus one as an action, so I'll go six, just to make sure. Um, this way, this is this is still the closest. There's no one has green affinity, so go off the closest threat. So if he turns once, he only moves one space, versus everyone else, he moves multiple spaces. All right, so that's what we're, we're gonna do. Now it's the monster's turn. We got, Lever below, so it's gonna, he's gonna go after this target and turn this direction. So Joy takes one in, one damage to Brain, so it goes from nine to eight insanity. And this is now I'm talking. And then the attack is the same thing again. It's speed two, damage five. She's got no evasion bonus. So we got a nine and a five, so that's two hits chest and the foot um, and how much damage is that five I don't want to take any chances so I'll spend two survival so go from six to four dodge boat all right now it's our turn again we'll look at the, the two cards and this is what I want so this could next round could definitely be the last round Soft Chuckle, I don't want to proc because if someone takes five damage and they're low in insanity, that could be bad. So I don't want to do Soft Chuckle at all. So I'm going to go ahead and advance, so I do Applause first. And Applause, I'll not spoil it for you, we'll just see what happens. So I'll have that go to the top. So I'll avoid soft chuck all, altogether because it's just bad. Like it's not an attack. It, he just does massive brain damage, which I don't want because I want to have insanity so I can survive future hunts and showdowns. So, And some people can't even take five damage. Like Oko now, if he takes five brain damage, will die potentially. So uh, yeah, so I'll have applause be at the top. All right, so he's gonna do an applause, so I'll just hold this in a circle. So I'll just go, uh, one, two, and I'll go one, two, three, four, five, and I'll go one, two, three, four, and, uh, I'll go one. Whew. All right. We're doing it. So now it's the monster's turn. The, the hand. And the hand is going to do applause. I didn't attack him at all. And every time he attacked, I found a way to absorb and dodge or mitigate damage, and everyone's up. That's kind of like he's teaching us tactics, like, hey guys, what do you have to do to survive? Sometimes don't attack. Uh, be immortal and use insanity, or use evasion. Use um, survival, use dodge. To alternate who takes damage so you can mitigate more damage. You know, it's, it's almost like he's teaching you a lesson, actually. That may have very well be the lesson. It's like, how do you survive an encounter if you can't attack? Makes you wonder. All right, so applause. 
So it said, start the showdown, place this card face down to the bottom of the AI deck, and that's what I originally did. I knew, I knew what this card was at the very beginning from the last time we played. So it says, the survivors fall to their knees in agony. And this is the card, again, that I was one away from drawing the last time I fought him and when everyone just died because no one had survival. I spent all this time attacking that everyone just took massive damage constantly. The survivors fall to their knees in agony, their bones suddenly twisting and changing. And for each survivor, you can cure all broken injuries, which no one has any broken injuries, but like if you did the penalty, people would have had broken injuries. And then roll one D10. Then end the showdown. And the survivors are victorious. So but before we get to that, we first roll D10 to see what happens to all of my survivors. And I roll for everybody. So I'll just go around the horn and then I'll look at the table afterwards. So we don't need this anymore. Of course, would someone still get one insanity? Does he target? No, it doesn't say target. Okay. So Taken gets a five. Sona gets a nine. Oko gets a six. And Joy it's a five. Now let's see what that means. Uh, so I'll just go around the horn. So Taken gain one permanent strength. I guess I should have done Oko first since he has a fucking thing, but no, and I forgot what he did. Fuck. I forgot what the roll was now. I think it was a six. I, th I thought I had two fives and a six. God damn. Ugh. Yeah, pretty sure that was great. All right, so Taken gets plus one permanent strength. So his permanent bonus goes, from, goes to plus one to plus two. So that means he goes from six to a seven for his, for his weapon. Uh, I'll just do the same numbers first. So that means Joy, he'll also roll to five, gets plus one strength. So it goes from a plus one to plus two. It goes from a six to a seven on the weapon. Uh, next we'll do the six, which is Oko, which is the same thing, plus one permanent strength. It goes from a plus four to a plus five and the seven goes to an eight. And then lastly, we got Sona, he got a nine, which is gain one permanent strength, one permanent accuracy, one permanent evasion, and a random fighting art. So like, what is the lesson I learned from this? During this entire fight, it was, it was really teaching you a lesson is look at what things trigger when you attack and how it can impact you. And in this case, it was worse to attack than it was to stand there and do nothing. And there are multiple ways, like I went to but previously, on how to mitigate damage. Either it's insanity or survival or armor or just rotating who's the who's the priority target. Because look at this, he clapped and everybody lived. Okay, but so that's Sona, who rolled nine. So let's do her bonuses. So she gets actually the most stuff. So she gets one strength and accuracy and evasion. So one accuracy. Goes from seven to a six, because accuracy makes it easier. One the strength, so it goes from one to a two, and then goes from a four to a five, and then one to evasion. And she was the evasion tank, so it goes from a two to a three, and then goes from four to a five without tokens. So now Sonnet has super evasion, and uh, every everybody got plus one strength. She got super evasion and more accuracy. 
Um, yeah. And what else does she get? Oh, and the random, and she gets a random fighting art, of which she already has two. So she gets a random fighting art also. And then we go to see what the aftermath happens. Okay, so I need to shuffle the fighting art deck and get the fighting art. Um, now because rhythm, ch what it was called, rhythm chaser is a regular fighting art, I have to include that in the deck. So I need to shuffle this right quick. But we did it. The whole point of this is to teach us a lesson. Like not only learning what happens, the consequences that could happen when you attack, but then also what are ways you can mitigate damage like it went into. Like, like in this instance, I took way more damage attacking than I did not attacking. So as long as there's an alternative way to win, it's like you don't always have to win. The win condition may not always be hurting the beast. That may have been the lesson that this is actually teaching you. Could be. But then again, I don't know what happens in the aftermath, but we did succeed. So it's got to be good, right? It's got to be good news. And most importantly, and surprisingly, everybody lived. Like, I was just shooting for how 50% of people lived. But not only did they live, but everyone got, actually got stronger. It's like, all we had to do was just do what the, he fucking asked. <laughs> yeah. So it's good news. That also means we're going to get a shit ton of endeavors also. All right, so the fighting art we get is Mighty Strike. On a perfect hit, I get plus two strength for us to attack. All right, so I'll add that to Sona right quick, and then we'll look at the showdown, um, the aftermath. So she got Mighty Strike. Which is PH plus two STG attack. PH being perfect hit. I use a lot of abbreviations because I've lived in space. Wow, so like we lived and people got stats. Holy shit. It's like sometimes you gotta mix it up, you know, this because of strategy you prepared for, you know, what do you have to do to live? So we rolled on the table, then we end the showdown, and the survivors are victorious. We did it. We lived. We did it. Wow, we did it. <laughs> Holy shit. I can't believe we lived. Oh my god. Go figure. I was wondering why when I've, you know, I've produced forms before when no one complained about the hand fight, because you were just supposed to learn. And it's maybe it's stuff you're supposed to learn for future encounters, you know? Who knows? It's kind of like when you fought the Butch before, there were unique mechanics, and the Kingsmen, there were unique things you had to do. And not just, you know, spank and tank like you typically can do for monsters. All right, so now I'm going to go to the... I'm looking for the showdown so I can go to the aftermath. 171. Okay, I'll show this two again. And it says, there was once an entity that knew everything, but never spoke. For every secret that escaped, it became weaker and its enemies stronger. But notice it taught us things without it even speaking though. Hmm. All right, so it says here, aftermath, any victorious survivor may immediately select fist and tooth weapon proficiency regardless of age milestone. But I don't like attacking with just a fist, so uh, we're definitely not going to do that. No. And then it says if there's a victory, um, it's 
works like regular, and then we go to the rewards table. Okay. So, first everyone gets one hunt experience. I didn't have Bliss out, who's the, the savior, so he doesn't get two experience. So everyone gets one experience. So Oko gets one. He's three away from retirement. Joy gets one, so he, that triggers age. We'll do that. Soda gets one. And Talkin gets one. So next, we'll go to... Uh, and in weapon proficiency, obviously nobody hit with any, we any weapons. But Joy does trigger age one. So let me go to that right quick. Because again, I trigger milestones when they happen immediately. For reasons I'm not gonna go into again. I just wanted to remind people that I know I'm doing this out. This is a custom campaign. Okay, um, age, 107. Okay, so I can select a weapon proficiency and then I roll the table. So, Joy, what do I want to do? Do I want to keep you with Kitty Kitty? Does anyone have proficiency in King? We have club, we do have one purpose guitar, a twilight sword, a spear, another spear. I don't have anybody with club. Would I ever switch her to club? That's the question. She's got speed two, strength two, accuracy one. I mean, I could. Well, also want to go kitty. I mean, she does have a lot of attacks, though. Speed seven. And then you can attack twice. That is pretty beasty. But again, she's also already... It may be better to have another weapon that have, actually has a speed bonus, is the thing. Because, you know, you already will attack twice. Um, well, I mean, I have two people going after Spear. I have somebody with Guitar. Who is that exactly? Uh, Jer. So I think I may do a different proficiency while I have the opportunity. I could do Club maybe club more op opportunities to uh, days or have the, the actual weapon swing more times so I think I'll do club I'll do club we are gonna do club and with the strength and accuracy that's a good thing as well okay yeah we'll do that so she gets she, it's gonna be proficient in club and then also roll 2d10 that doesn't count. So we got <laughs> shitty rolls. A three and a two. Uh, let's see here. Three and two is a five. Gain plus one permanent strength. Wow, man. She, her strength is gaining. She's like an Amazon. Okay. So she's going to be proficient in club, meaning I can use the skull hammers or the bone club because they're all clubs. And she aged up. All right, so now we're going to look up, go back to the hand showdown. So see, not all monsters you want to, you can attack. And maybe sometimes you don't want to actually attack. And then, so it's like, then when you can't attack, how do you live? Like I've already gone through multiple times, right? All right, so now we do the rewards. Everyone got fun experience. She got mastery and gained a, profi a proficiency. Now we do rewards. The hand hesitates before leaving. Roll d10 and then look at the table below. Well, we got a nine. That's a really high number. I hope it's really good. Woo. We'll see. On a nine plus, the hand bows graciously and vanishes, leaving a package carefully wrapped in one leather strange resource. 
Inside is one skull and five basic resources, but also minus one population. So when he did visit, or so he did apparently phase into the settlement and kill somebody, and then gave us the boon from the body and other shit. Looks like what happened. So we lose a population and we get a skull and a leather and five basic random resources. Holy shit. Wow. Okay, so we lose one population, meaning we lose somebody who we added. The question is, I'll do that first. Do I create gear cards for everybody? Uh, I... I don't, I didn't erase stuff that's on here, which is a little concerning as far as applying the bonuses. Did I already make Jonas? No. Did I? No. Minus one population. That would make it easier upkeep if I just get rid of Jonas. And it does make sense because he was in the settlement, not here on site. It was sitting there. I think I just forgot to erase these bonuses when I did it. So Jonas, I didn't create the card yet, but I could just say he just dies. Yeah, I'll do that. Unless I just want to say kills Oko, but Oko's actually, he's got to actually die, actually. All right, so Jonas, I'm going to have die. So I'll say, found as Dead pieces in leather satchel from the hand. Okay, so Jonas is dead. So I get minus one population and go from 10 to 9. Another death happens. And now you would say also I trigger the uh, dark trait. But remember, that only happens if people participate. No one even noticed Jonas disappear and end up in a bag. So for that, because of that reason, that bonus doesn't get applied at all. Okay, so we're at population 9. Jonas is dead. And... But the question is, could I then still cannibalize the body? I'm going to say no because we, we don't even know where the body was. We just got a bag of pieces and then notice Jonas is missing. So I'll say like it was, it was a whole ghost, you know, unseen abduction and slaughter. Sure. Okay, so back to what we're doing. So we get, we, we already did the minus one population. So now we get five basic resources, a leather, and a skull. So leather, I think, is a special resource, if I recall. So we get a leather. It was funny. I was, I was shooting for an iron, and I got a leather. Well, go. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so now we get a skull and five basic resources. So I need to pull out a skull. And then shuffle to see what other resources we get. So the skull counts as a bone. So, so we got a skull, then we get some other resource. Wow. This went from, I just want to survive a, a slaughter to, we got stats, everyone survived, and we got resources. Holy Christ. <laughs> so it's like, man. 
if I just didn't try to attack them initially till I blew through all my survival nets and oh shit, just run away. <laughs> Would have turned out totally differently. You live, you learn, right? But it was a good thing I challenged him, because at least I didn't lose any resources. And then I effectively kind of got him came out now positive, right? So What I also got to do now is this week is um, make the, the Watcher because that fight is probably just like 10 Lantern years away and it may take a while for me to build him because he's got a lot of pieces because I have to cut it out of the, of the sprue and then sand down the uneven parts and then glue it one piece at a time. So that's going to take a while. Probably going to take a couple weeks actually. Or a week, we'll see. If I do one, all the pieces I can per gluing per day. We'll see. So again, what I'm hoping for here for the resources is to get as many hides as possible because then I could turn them into leather. And I already have the leather worker, so now I can just start just making leather for this, for the shit that I need. It's what I really want to do. This is also advantageous because more resources I can use in addition to the next hunt for making shit. Because again, a couple of ye uh, years from now, the uh, another scheduled hands of heat is going to happen and I'm going to lose half my resources. So I don't just want to get stuff. I want to then turn it into stuff I can actually make. Or have so many resources that I can get rid of shit and keep the stuff that I really need. So kind of both, so this is good. This has actually turned out super positive. This actually turned out like we downed the monster. I mean, we fucking got nine resources and stats. So it's like, fuck me. And hunt experience and everybody lived. <laughs> Holy shit. Are we actually doing something right? Is that possible? He killed one, he maimed one of our people, butchered it for resources, which we badly needed. And then we did, did attack him and learned how to defensively survive in different ways. And he's like, good job. <laughs> wow. You know? Sometimes shit, oh my God, I fucking looked at the card and it just happened to be love juice. God damn it. Now I got shuffle again. That sucks. Okay, I got shuffle again. <laughs> I, I dropped cards when I was talking. But we did it. Wow. This was completely night and day different experience than when I fought him last time. And it was the same level, but just complete, like I said, completely different strategy since I, I learned... At first, I was trying to find a way to hurt him at all. And I'm just like, it's fucking impossible. What are you supposed to do? Because, like, literally, it's impossible. You have, to, you have to have such egregious ways of doing damage and mitigating, which I don't have that level of strength yet. It's like, what the fuck are you supposed to do? Otherwise, it's an impossible fight. It's just, just survive. Just don't attack him because it's impossible. Just don't attack him. All right, so here are the five resources we get. We get a monster, oh, let me show you. Okay, so where we got the leather, where we got the skull, then we got a monster, and I'll show you all the stuff up close. So we got a monster organ, a monster hide, love juice, woohoo! Monster bone, and oh my God, another love juice. Holy shit, holy shit. Is stuff going right for us now? Oh my god, is that possible? So again, what it said for the number nine is, the hand bows graciously and vanishes, leaving a package carefully wrapped in one leather strange resource. Inside is one skull and five basic random resources and then minus one population. Wow, we fucking did it, guys. We did it. Holy shit, we did it. We learned. 
We learned. All right, so let me show you all the goods we got, and then that'll be the end of the stream. But we did it, yay. We did it. All right, so in total, we got five, six, we got nine resources, which is crazy. I'm just gonna organize this a little bit. Right. So this is the loot. We got a monster organ. Actually, before I do this, the skull says a survivor of your choice gains one insanity. Um, so someone does need to gain one insanity. And so I'll give to Oko. Because his thing is all about being immortal. So he actually needs insanity. Yeah. So we got a monster organ. We got a leather. We got a monster hide, monster bone, skull, love juice times two. Great opportunity to dramatically increase your population. And then we got a couple of canthus. Boom, we did it. Nine resources and stats from the hand. What? Wow, great. We learned our lesson and were rewarded for it. Good job. You did it, guys. Awesome. Well, that was surprisingly a good nemesis counter. The best one yet, actually, by far. Leaps and bounds. Well, thanks for watching, everybody. Um, exciting rematch with the hand, which went well. Uh, the next stream is going to be Lantern Year 14, the settlement phase. And we're going to have a ton of resources and a ton of endeavors so most likely I'm gonna have a ton of stuff happen so tune in for lantern year 14 next episode again this is is morda and thanks for watching